12th Sunday of the year, Entrance Antiphon, the Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord, and bless your heritage, and govern them forever. Mass is offered for the following intentions for all the departed souls in the family of Tom and Annama. Along with these intentions, let us also offer ourselves, our family, especially our brothers and sisters all over the world who suffer because of COVID-19. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, dear brothers and sisters. As we come together as God's family, as we are entering into the 12th Sunday in ordinary time, today the Lord invites us to be strengthened with His presence and not to be afraid, not to be worried. It's a right assurance that God gives us, especially in this moment where everyone is panicked, struggling, and struggling to find their own strength to overcome this pandemic. And so let us prepare ourselves, trusting God in His mercy and His grace, that we all will overcome, overcome sin and death, we'll overcome all sicknesses and diseases that we face by confessing our own sins and asking the Lord to forgive us. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned sin in my thoughts, thoughts and in my words, words in, in what, what I have done, done and in what, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, Therefore, I ask, ask Blessed Mary, Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray, pray for me, for me to Lord, Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the 
Father You take away the sins of the world Have mercy on us You take away the sins of the world Receive our prayer You are seated at the right hand of the Father Have mercy on us For you alone are the Holy One You alone are the Lord You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ And, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the first reading, Jeremiah gives went to the bitter feelings of rejection that he experiences. The first reading, a reading from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear many whispering, terror is on my side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends, watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be deceived, then we can overcome him and take our refuge in him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecu persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Responsorial Psalm, your response is, in your great mercy, answer me, O God. Please repeat. In, in your, your great, great mercy, mercy answer, answer me, o God. o God. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame has covered my face. To my own kin, I have become an outcast, a stranger to the children of my mother. Zeal for your house consumes me and taunts against you fall on me. Your response, in your, in your great, great mercy, mercy answer, answer me, O Lord. Lord. But I pray to you, O Lord, for a time of my favor. In your great mercy, answer me, O Lord, with your salvation that never fails. Lord, answer, 
for your mercy is kind in your great compassion turn toward me your response in, in your, your great, great mercy, mercy answer, answer me, me o lord. lord the poor when they see it will be glad and god seeking hearts will revive for the lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his own in their chains let the heavens and the earth give him praise the seas and everything that moves in them your response in your great mercy answer me o lord in the second reading in these verses paul speaks about the genesis of sin in fact the idea of the original sin builds on what paul teaches in this paragraph the second reading a reading from the letter of saint paul to the romans brethren just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin and so death spread to all men because all sinned for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given but sin is not counted where there is no law yet death reigned from adam to moses even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of adam who was a type of the one who was to come but the free gift is not like the trespass for if many died through one man's trespass much more have the grace of god and the free gift by the grace of grace of that one man jesus christ abounded for many the word of the lord thanks, thanks be, to, be god. to god let's stand for the gospel acclamation The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. Gospel of Matthew chapter 10 verses 26 to 33. At that time, Jesus said to his apostles, Have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed. Are hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say it in the light. And what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear for those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, do not be afraid or have no fear. In today's gospel, Jesus 
repeats for three times. And it is said, among the most frequent used terms or a concept in the Bible that includes both Old Testament and the New Testament, is not love one another or is not forgive one another, is not pray for your enemy or it's not that love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, but just one word, do not be afraid. The, the phrase is very much used. It is said, it is used about 365 times in the Bible. It to resemble that the, the Lord tells us each day of our own life in every year to say, do not be afraid. It doesn't stop there. He says, do not be afraid, for I am with you. One of my, so close to my heart is Prophet Jeremiah. Prophet Jeremiah very clearly, explicitly portrays a very human feeling, a human experiences of pain, suffering, rejection, and yet, God's assurance of being with them. Especially Jeremiah personally, being a prophet, suffers a lot. And every time he suffers, being rejected, being plotted to be killed, he runs to God and complains, it is you who call me. The Lord gently tells him, do not be worried, do not be afraid, I am with you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that is the a blessed assurance that we have today. The Lord tells each of us, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, do not be disheartened, because I am with you. I am with you till the end of ages. Today, as we all, being panicked, the whole world is shattered, shaken, and locked down due to this pandemic. I'm sure you might ask, how can we be without fear? Because we are not able to go near our own loved ones. We are not able to visit the people whom we love, whom we love to meet. We, whatever we used to be normal, it has become abnormal. The fear creeps us, pulls us away from our daily routine, pulls us away from our normality, and makes us to be more reserved, more panic with, and to see each one with fear. And so today the Lord tells us, do not be afraid. Even this will pass and this, the Lord is more powerful than all that we experience. The Lord will bring an end to this and again we will glory as the Lord said to prophet Jeremiah. They will plot, they will come to capture you even to put you to death, but do not be afraid, I will be with you. I will protect you and I will guard you. And today the Lord gives us once again the assurance in this moment. I'm sure we all of us call to give this assurance to our loved ones at first at home. Because even our own people we are more panicked. Every time you switch on your television, we are more panicked. Because the number of cases that are increasing, number of death, that increasing, so it can be frightening. So therefore, let's not also become one to bring panic, to bring fear into others, but rather let us strengthen them with the blessed assurance that the Lord gives us, the Lord loves us and He is with us. And of course, we read in the book of Proverbs, chapter 9, verse 10, they says, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Definitely we should clarify what is the thing, the fear that we should have and what are the fears that we do not, we should not have. We should never have a fear that can be paralyzing, that can take us away from God, that can take us away from our own loved ones. But rather we should fear, fear sin. We must fear death. We must fear God's condemnation so that we may repent, we may prepare ourselves for, ask for forgiveness so that we would do not fall into the condemnation. That's why Jesus very clearly says, do not worry about the person who can kill your body, but rather worry about someone who can also kill your body and soul. Quite often we can be misunderstood that Satan has got a power to kill our soul. 
definitely no. Satan only tempts us. Satan only takes us away from the love of God. It puts us into fall into sin. And the sin brings us death. It is God who decides. It is a God who passes judgment that whether we be condemned to hell or to heaven. Therefore, let us not make Satan as someone who can take control of our soul. Definitely no. Satan only pushes us to sin. It tempts us. Therefore, it's very important that we need to be clear. Let us not be frightened of Satan or the evil things that comes around us because they can only tempt us, they can only push us to sin. But rather, it's only God can condemn us. Only God can put us to death in mind, body and soul. Therefore, let us have the fear of God. Let us ask for the grace of the wisdom which will enable us to understand this, you know, the right fear so that we'll be able to overcome we are able to come closer to God to understand much better. And today, second thing, let us reflect on. I'm sure Jesus himself experienced the fear. When he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he feared. He feared so much so that he said, my soul, my soul is sorrowful even to the point of death. And yet, it does not stop there. It does not allow the fear, the his worries to make him, to push him to death, but rather he submits once again. Let not my will be done, but let your will be done. So happily surrendering to the will of God makes him victorious on the Easter day. Yes, my friends, that's what we need to also learn. When things push us down, do not worry, the Lord will send his angels to strengthen us. Definitely we can overcome. We will be able to rise on our knees and God will rise us up on the last day. And second, the third thing today I want you to reflect also is, let us know who we are. Let us know who we are. If we know who we are, we will not be frightened of sin and death. We will be more confident about our God. We will be more confident about how God loves us and brings us His grace into our lives. Therefore, it's very important, very, very clearly it says, book of Genesis, God created us, men and women, in His own image and likeness. And we read Psalms 139, verse 14, very clearly says, God so fearfully and wonderfully made the human being. And letter to Romans chapter 8, verse 30, St. Paul very clearly says, The Lord whom he predestined, he called them. Whom he called them, he justified them. Whom he justified, he also glorified them. Yes, my friends, we believe our birth is not of an accident. God has predestined each of us to be born into this world to bring his glory into this. Therefore, whomever he has called, he has justified. He has justified our sin. He has justified our own inclinations towards evil things through his death on the cross because he has glorified us through his resurrection. Therefore, we need to glorify God through resurrecting ourselves from sin, from the clenches of the sin and Satan by saying no to that, by being strengthened by the grace of God. And the fourth point today I want to reflect is, Jesus very clearly says, those people who acknowledge me before men, before people, I will acknowledge them before God. Yes, my friends, the purpose of God creating human being is to know him, to love him, and to serve him. And how do we serve God is being a witness to his love and mercy to the world. We are called to be a witness. A Christian life is a witnessing life. And that's saying, John very clearly says in his first epistle, verse, chapter 1, verse 1, says, Whatever we have seen with our own eyes, what we heard with our own ears, and what we have touched, to that we bear witness. To that we bear witness. Yes, my friends, witness is nothing else but bearing witness, no, giving a witness, the proof that what we have seen or heard or experienced in first hand. And like St. John, he calls us, let us ask for the grace. Lord, allow, give me the grace so that I may touch you. I may know you. I may hear you. I may bear witness to you. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, being a disciple, being an apostle of Christ is being a witnessing life. In this moment of pandemic, fearful situation all around the world, we are called to be the presence of God, to tell we can overcome. We will overcome with the grace of God because our God is not God of dead, is a God of living. Our God is not 
weaker. He is more powerful. His benevolence is mighty. He can help us to overcome. If a God can create, bring the whole creation out of nothing, the Lord will bring us also victorious in these situations. Therefore, let us trust, trust in God at all times and surrender ourselves, surrender the whole world that definitely the grace of God will triumph in this world. Amen. Let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for, for us men, men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, your giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus asked his disciples not to fear those who kill the body because they cannot kill the soul, but to fear God who punishes the guilty. God does not wish the destruction or downfall of any person, but cares for all living beings as he cares for sparrows in the air. Let us place our petitions before the Lord, saying, Lord, protect us always. Lord, protect us always. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that they may fearlessly proclaim the message of Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord protect, protect us always. For all Christians who have been empowered to fight evil by the grace received at baptism, that they may keep away from sinful thoughts and inclinations, we pray. Lord, protect us always. That the world may become a place where everyone can live without fear of being hurt and without the fear of losing their possessions or property, we pray. Lord, protect us always. For world leaders, that they may ensure that nations live in peace that disputes of whatever nature be resolved through dialogue, we pray. Lord, protect, protect us always. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may share our fears and anxieties and learn to trust in God who cares for us, we pray. Lord, protect, protect us always. Please pray for your personal and pers local needs. God our Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son Jesus, who himself faced opposition to his life and mission. Trusting in you, Jesus went ahead and accomplished his mission, even to the point of shedding his blood. Give us the grace that trusting in providence, we may live our lives in peace and tranquility. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to you in love, O oh Lord, on the 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice, the sacrifice in your hands, hands for, for the praise, praise and glory of His name, for our good, good and good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its actions we may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. And even fashioned for us a remedy out of the mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down a spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took the bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. But this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he gave it his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this 
this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until you come again, O Lord, until you come again, O Lord, until Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. To God Francis, our Pope, Peter Machra, our Bishop, Archbishop, with all other bishops and all the clergy and entire people you have made your own. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, O oh Lord, welcome them in the light of your face. Lord, have mercy on us all gathered here as one family, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, with the Blessed Joseph, our chaste pause, the Blessed Apostles, now all the saints and martyrs who are pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be caused eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. But save his command and found by divine teaching, we all dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. Lord, that by the help of your mercy, we always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory are yours, yours, now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And so graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Take away the sins of the world, misery, no peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, don't know these punches. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed and the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life Let us recite the Anima Christi, Soul of Christ, sanctify me, Body of Christ, save me, Blood of Christ, inebriate me, Water from the side of Christ, wash me, Passion of Christ, strengthen me, O good Jesus, hear me, within thy wounds hide me, suffer me not to be separated from thee, from the malignant enemy defend me. In the hour of my death, call me, and bid me to come to thee, that with thy angels and saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed one, nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Sacred Heart, Immaculate and fair, around your shrine we gather now to claim a mother's care. Our Lady, young children call on you, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. Remember that your the sacred heart, the, the great things the Lord has done for you. He chose you for his mother. He wanted you close to his cross. He gives you a share in his glory. He listens to your prayer. Offer him our prayers of praise and thanksgiving. Present our petitions to him. Let us live like you in the love of your Son, so that his kingdom may come. Lead us to the source of living water that flows from his heart, spreading over the world hope and salvation, justice and peace. See our trust in you. Answer our prayer. Show yourself always our Mother. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst, amongst women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, pray for us.